Hello, I'm Peter Murray. I'm curator in chief at New London Architecture. And uh, this is a series of conversations with industry leaders. And today I'm joined by Gerald Kay, chief executive of Helical, one of the leading players in the London office market. Welcome, Gerald. Hello, Peter. Good to be on your program. Perhaps we can start talking about the impact of COVID-19. Uh, location, location, location used to be the motto of the property business, but uh, timing, timing, timing in uh, these uncertain times is really important. Uh, how is this affected on the cycle of the sort of developments that you're doing at the moment? Uh, I, 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 whilst we were always taught at college that uh, the three things you needed to know about property were location, 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 there were two other things that uh, we were we sh should also have been taught. One was timing, 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 and the other was uh, always buy in the rain and sell in the sun. So if you follow those three basic uh, rules, then you'll probably do all right. Um, as to our own uh, portfolio, um, we, we've we, we've actually got very little on site at the moment. We're just finishing uh, the final final three flats at, at Bart Square and we're doing the demolition at 33 Charterhouse uh, Place, uh, Charterhouse Street. So if, um, and this is obviously a complete nightmare, the whole of this coronavirus thing and is causing untold damage to the economy, which I hope is not permanent. But uh, from Helical's point of view, it, it, this is a less bad time for it to have happened than 18 months ago when we had four or five major projects on site. Um, so we finished those and we've let virtually all the space up. So we're, we're you know, well, well placed. And that's probably the case of the wider office market, isn't it? Which is not quite so exposed as it was in the 1990s or even 2008 uh, period. Yeah, I, look, I, th I think the situation here is different because the uh, early 90s and um, recession downturn and the GFC in 2008 were both really financially led um, recessions and uh, this recession we're in now has really come absolutely from nowhere in the last four weeks and is as a result of a global pandemic which uh, nobody saw coming um, although there is a very good YouTube uh, clip of a Bill Gates TED talk from 2015 where he he, he did warn the world of a pandemic but uh, nobody took it seriously enough. I, I suppose that uh, having a uh, rental holiday isn't really very great for cash flow these days either. No I, 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 I can understand where the government was coming from but the way it was presented was that it was effectively a moratorium on having to pay rent. And in fact, it's a moratorium on the landlord being able to forfeit the tenant's lease if they don't pay the rent. So a number of tenants haven't been able to pay or haven't paid their rent this quarter. I can understand the food and beverage and the retail tenants who, who are really struggling. Um, uh, but it's not, it's not helpful. And... Um, Hopefully, we're we're all right and proper by the uh, June quarter day. And you, you mentioned the retail sector, which obviously was going through uh, problems uh, before this happened, and this is going to impact more, even more severely on it. How do you see the future of uh, retail in the UK? Well, retail is is obviously very tough, and and I think the problem is that there's been an enormous expansion. For, for the amount of space that's devoted to selling retail. And what I mean by this is all of those vast warehouses you see as you drive around the UK, which are effectively shops, but they're virtual shops. Nobody ever goes there. They just go there online. And if you add that on top of all, the, all of the traditional retail, then there's just far too much of it. So inevitably, um, rents, are, rents are under pressure. Retailers are under pressure because they're trying to sell from too many outlets. They're trying to sell both online and in the stores. And it's, it's not good. So a lot of the retail space has got to come out of retail use and has got to be repurposed for, for other uses. And then the market will get back to some form of, of equilibrium. 
And if one looks at the uh, amount of requirement of office space, clearly uh, the current crisis has accelerated people's use of digital media. Uh, uh, obviously, working from home is now uh, much more common. Uh, what do you think the longer term impact on that will uh, be on, on office space and the re requirement for office space? Uh, well, it's a, that's a very interesting question, Peter, and it could go one of two ways. Uh, the first the first way would be that uh, people uh, are working from home and uh, they're finding the technology is working 100 percent and that uh, it's a it's a enjoyable productive uh, experience uh, and they quite uh, quite happy being on their own uh, or, or just locked in with their families uh, for a long period of time uh, or they think actually i like being in an office because i like the interaction with my colleagues i like the uh the camaraderie of it um it's far more productive because everything's there and uh you're you're moving around you're doing different things so uh, where will it end up i suspect more people will work from home for some of the time but I, I still believe that most people want to go to an office and I think trying to trying to run an organization if everybody's scattered around the country is is much more difficult than if they're all in the office and you can you can see them and and I, I think people they spark off other people and, and they they get um, they, they, they don't get that if they're, they're stuck at home um, but I think one one change which will happen is I think that the density where people are packed in very close together on, a, on an office floor, that could easily change because I think as a result of this virus, people will probably want to have more space between them and their, their, their neighbouring desks. So um, you as a company, along with other firms that like... Uh, GPE and Dermot London have been leading the field in terms of retrofit and uh, we are seeing a growing concern about climate change and the importance of uh, embodied carbon in buildings and so on. Uh, how, how, how do you see that shaping up uh, uh, after we get out of this crisis? Um, look, uh, my sort of rule of thumb, Peter, is that if uh, you're going to demolish an existing building you really need to put a building back that sort of double the size of the one you're demolishing to make the to make the numbers work um, and obviously that doesn't apply if, if the existing building is really so bad that the only thing you can do is put it out of its misery and, and knock it over but what's what's interesting is that the, the years gone by buildings had to be to a, an institutional standard, uh, the sort of traditional office we're all used to. But more recently, over the last five years, 10 years, um, people like character in an office building, so they don't want everything to be necessarily how you would have expected an institutional office building to be. So um, uh, I think as long as, as, long as the building has got good bones and you can do something with it and it's got character then I think I think you keep it and of course if you keep a building it's a lot quicker because you haven't got to demolish it and dig out the ground and so on and uh, less risk and you're quicker back to market. Thank you much. Just finally uh, uh, can you give us one bit of advice that you would uh, pass on to your peers in this uh, current uh, crisis? Oh, that's a, oh that's, that's, that's a tricky one, Peter. But uh, a while ago, a long time ago, my uh, boss said to me, he said, uh, keep your head down and follow through. And actually, that is really good advice, whether you're trying to play golf or you're playing cricket or indeed you're trying to be a property developer. Uh, you've got to work hard and you've got to make sure you follow absolutely everything through to the end. Thank you very much, Gerald. That's uh, very helpful. Keep your head down and follow through. Uh, we'll certainly follow up on that advice too. And uh, uh, thank you very much for your conversation. And I look forward some stage in the future to uh, meeting again uh, physically. Thank you very much. Peter, great to talk to you and thank you very much.